This is tutorial video 3 regarding the finite element analysis of plane stress structures. We will cover the preprocessor stage of a modeling of a glass plate connection. So we will cover the definition of the geometry and the meshing and the definition of groups. If you're interested in uh, how to apply the loads and boundary conditions and run the analysis, please go to the next videos. We will be modeling a plane stress structure. This is a glass uh, thin plate, which is very common in practice. The definition of the geometry is given here, so we have a continuous plate, which has a free edge on, on the left hand side, and is continuous plate on the right and on the top and bottom. You have some circular openings, which are spaced 300 millimeters, and they are 150 millimeters offset. The diameter of the uh, openings are 100 millimeters, and the plate thickness is 10 millimeters. We will be applying a tension uniform load in one of the edges. So the first uh, thing we need to think about is what is the geometry of the model and we will be modeling just a single strip considering geometry conditions. So for this we will just model one strip and so the top and bottom edges will have to think about the boundary conditions in this particular case and we will apply the load on the right hand side. Now the material properties for glass, for example, are the ion modulus 72 gigapascals and the Poisson ratio 0 0.1. And the physical property of, of the thickness of the elements are 10 millimeters. These are the only parameters you need to do to run a plane stress analysis in the elastic regime. Now the boundary conditions, we will discuss them later on, but we know that these two planes here are planes of symmetry and therefore the displacements perpendicular to these planes uh, should be equal to zero. Again, for the opening, we will assume that the steel connection is perfectly clamped to the, to the plate and therefore uh, the, the movement, the displacements of these nodes will be equal to zero. In reality, uh, there might be some slip, so, um, but to simplify the problem, we will assume that this is a perfect connection. So we'll run an analysis in SAP and we'll start with the preprocessor. We start um, a model from scratch. So we'll start a new model. We have the units set of newtons and millimeters and we use a blank model. So are working in plane X and Z and we'll draw a node we start at the origin 0 0 we press escape to select the node we right click we see the properties of the node and we change the coordinates so this is the origin now we're going to draw of the plate so we're going to draw these four nodes here so for this we select the element, we go to edit, replicate, and we copy one time in the x direction. Now regarding the size of the element, this direction here, the width is 300 millimeters, which is the space in between the openings. This other distance here is up to us. We need to consider a distance long enough so that the distribution of stresses becomes uniform. If we take a distance from here to there, which is roughly two times this thickness, we'll get 600 millimeters. If the distance from the edge is 150, then we'll have a 750 millimeter width, which is the distance from here to there. So if the distance is 750 millimeters, that's the other node. We can restore the full view and we see the two nodes. Now we draw the nodes at the top edit, replicate, and we copy in the set direction for 300 millimeters. So this is the contour of the uh, area. Now we need to draw the area. We draw probably area. We select the nodes that we have defined. We click enter and we press escape to be able to select the element. 
So this is an area element, one finite element, and we need obviously we need to refine the mesh and we need to create the opening inside. To do this in SAP, um, the best way to do is to draw a line with a circular shape and then remove the elements inside. Other softwares allow you to re uh, remove certain areas from the mesh, so uh, it depends on the software. So to draw the circle, we can first draw the center. So we select the node at the origin and we make a copy, replicate. Um, the center of this circle here is 150 by 150. That's the center. And we're going to draw one point in the circle. So we copy, make a copy of the center at a distance 50, which is half of the diameter. That's the other point. And now, similar as we would do in CAD, we will do a radial copy. Okay, so we select the node, we go to Edit, Replicate, and we go to Radial Copy. Now, the axis of rotation is parallel, in this case, to axis Y, which is perpendicular to the screen. And the center of the axis of rotation is at 150 by 150, which is the center of the circle. We're going to, do, to draw another node at 10 degrees. And that's the other point in the circle. Now, we will draw a line, so draw a frame, that connects these two nodes. And now we will copy this line several times to create the circle. So we go again to replicate, radial, and now we will copy every 10 degrees and we will do 35 copies to cover the entire circumference. That is the, so that is the circle. Now we can remove the center node because we don't need this anymore. So this line circle is made out of frame elements. For a plane straight structure we will have to remove these line elements after we have built up the mesh we will use it as a support geometrical um, tool. So now we will save the model. Now we need to create a mesh that will be using the line element and these nodes to be able to create the opening. So we select all of the elements. We go to edit, edit areas and divide areas. We will use the option of divide area using general divide tool, which is based on the selected points and lines. And it gives a default value of the density of the mesh. We will use this defined value to calculate a first mesh. So this is the mesh. As you can see, the mesh density is quite low here and increases towards the connection. So there's a transition in the mesh. The connection of the node seems to be correct. So as we go towards the opening, we can see that the line elements, there is a point in the center which is not including the line element. Now I want to create a group which contains all of the nodes in the circle. So if you go to select by properties, you can select a frame section and we can select the default section. This will give us a selection of all the circle, which is the line elements. But I want to select this and also the nodes. Now I want to break this line wherever there is a node in the mesh. So for example, in all of these nodes. So what I'm going to do is select all of the elements. In my finite element model and I'm going to break, I'm going to go to edit, edit lines, divide frames and we break at intersection with selected joints. So when you zoom in now you can see that the, these line elements are really divided with the nodes. So now we can select again the frame elements and we can view just these elements by going to view 
and show selection only. So this shows all the line elements at the nodes at the circle. Now we want to create a group that contains all of these. So we can define a group. We add new group which we're going to call circle. And we have to assign all of these lines and nodes into that group. So assign, assign to group, and assign to circle. So now every time we want to select this, we can go to select group circle. Now I can start um, removing the line elements. So from circle, if we just select by properties, we select frame sections. Here we have only selected the line elements, okay? And we will have to delete this later on. Now, first let's remove all the elements inside the circle. So we go to view, show all, and we have to review, we have to remove all of the elements by hand. So we take these elements by hand. Then, once you have the geometry, it's always advisable to save the model. So now, there we go. So now we save the model. <coughs> now we, we can delete the line elements, so we go to select by properties frame section fsec1 and we delete this. Now we can check that we still have the group called circle. These are all of the nodes there. So we have defined now the geometry and we have created a group with all the nodes in the circle. So we're ready to go to the next stages in the analysis.